Okay. Um, this is going to be my super simple, quick and easy how I color and shade things tutorial. So it's easy to look back on. Okay. So, I mean, I have my sketch here. And firstly, we're going to go with how I pick out my colors. So usually I, you know, grab my skin tone color, which would be this or like whatever, it just depends on what character it is, you know? And then I would pick out my hair color and um, I'm just going to make it blue. Um, so if I'm color picking off of a palette or a character, what I would do is I would create a clipping layer and I like to make my drawings like warm toned. So I would take like a red color, like, or like an orange color and I would just go over this. And then I would take a linear burn color or layer, not color, um, and then just adjust. So now these are like more similar to each other than it was before. So now I'm gonna use this warmer color to color my drawing. And what I do when I'm coloring, I need to pick a better thing. Okay, what I do is I outline my entire drawing so then I could bucket tool it in later. So I'm just gonna do this real quick. Okay, now that I have that outline, I am going to take my bucket tool, which this is my settings for the bucket tool, and then I'm going to fill it in. What I love about the paint tool side bucket tool is that it doesn't leave any of those nasty white lines. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is create another clipping tool on top of this, and then I'm going to take my hair color and color it in and I do I color it this way because when you color the whole thing in you can just go in with a clipping mask and just you can just you know it won't go outside the lines which makes it really really easy for you to color Okay, now I'm done with coloring the hair, I am going to pick the color for my eyes. Since I think that is the only other color I really need in this drawing. So what I do with for eyes is I either pick a light yellow color like this or I pick a very light blue. You never really want to do completely white for the eyes. It, it just doesn't look very natural. Um, so yeah, that's what I do for eyes. It just honestly makes it look better in the end than just bright white. Because bright white doesn't have any, like, you know, hue to it. It's just white. So this just makes it look better. Now I'm just going to combine the layers together using c the command. Or not command, but like a keyboard shortcut, control E. I'm sure there's another, um, yeah. So this button under the new layer button is the way to combine the two layers together if you want to like manually do it but I like the keyboard shortcut better. Now I'm going to go and add the blush to this drawing. You always want to add blush first in my opinion. So I usually take like an orangey color, pretty bright orangey color. You never want to go all the way up or all the way to the side. Um, you want to just pick a nice color somewhere in the middle that is way too bright. I'm going to make it darker. Okay, so what I do is I color, I put blush on the nose, on the cheeks, in the corner of the eyes, and on the lips. And if the ears are showing, I'll put it on the tip of the ears, but you know, I there's no ears showing in this drawing, which is okay. And then I will blend it out with my watercolor brush, which Personally, I have a texture on my watercolor brush, um, 
which you don't need to I just prefer it because I just think it makes it look nicer okay now you can make this a multiply layer if you want um, which is what I did and then you just want to lower the opacity and there's your blush and if you want to go extra with it which sometimes I do you want to put blush like in the spots where you think the most blush would be so in these type of spots and especially on top of the upper lip so just do this And then, of course, multiply, lower the opacity, whatever. And that just adds another layer of, you know, depth to it. Okay. Now, create another layer, clipping mask, and then you want to pick... A, what I do is I pick a nice dark red color for my um, shading. I just prefer it. I like it better. And now I am going to shade my drawing. And these are the spots where I typically put the shading in. So like under the eyebrow here, like near the corner of the eye, um, some on the outside of the eye, something like that. On the underside of the nose and down the nose, under this little flap. See, you never want to put um, any shading above that since this is a, if you think about this in a 3D space, this would be like jutted out a little bit. So you would only want to put contour, not contour, shading under it, and only under it because there wouldn't be any shading on top. So that's not how things in a 3D space work. And then I put some, and I don't remember what that part of the body is called. But I put some there, put some under the chin, and for the cheeks, cheekbones, and then this is like the classic artist thing. You just don't want to put a nice big old chunk of contour. Not con shading, shading. You want to put shading under the chin. I mean, I guess it's technically contour. You can contour there if you're doing like makeup, but. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Now I just want to blend it out. You want to have a pretty big brush and do a lot of like strokes, but pretty quickly. Because you don't want to linger there and go, Oop. and you don't want to add a lot of pressure either. So don't add any pressure while you're doing this. Or not a lot anyway, because if you press down, it's going to add more color. And you don't want to add more color. You just added color. So you don't, you don't want to, you know, add more than what's already there and some of these lines you want to leave sharp you don't want to blend it out all the way because that's not how shadows work normally on like you know a 3d space so this right here is sharp you know and under the cheeks would be sharp I mean that's like personally how I do it but for the cheeks because that's how I contour in my face in real life. But some things you just want to leave sharp because that's how it naturally would work in a 3D space. Okay. So that's all. Oh, I forgot. Hold on. Forgot to add shading under the little bits of hair. Never forget that. Okay, now that we're actually done, let's create. Okay, now that we're <clears throat> okay, now that we're actually done with this, um, let's make this a multiplier or a shade layer. Shade layer is a little bit more intense, but more saturated. I like multiply better. <laughs> so just lower the opacity on that. With I usually do multiple layers of shading, which I'm gonna get into. So I try to make this pretty light. Now just combine the layers using the keyboard shortcut or the manual thing. Um, and then we're going to add another layer of shading. And we're not going to do it exactly in the same place as last time. But just in the places where there would be more shadow. So in these deep crevices. 
So still a little bit more under the chin, a bit more under the nose. We're not going to do as much as we would last time because it's not needed. And doing this adds more depth to the drawing. Um, it just makes it look more, you know, like it's in a 3D space rather than just completely flat. Okay, now that we're done with that, multiply again. I didn't shade that correctly, or blend it out, lower the opacity. That's it without it. That's it with it. Okay, now that we're done with that, I like to just go in and blend it out a little bit more. Just so it looks a bit smoother. Okay, now we're going to go to highlighting. And what I do is I take a nice, light, almost white, yellow color. Um, and then I do my highlighting in these little spots. So under the chin, in kind of a curved motion because, you know, chins are curved. And then in the eye bag area, I add some white on the eyelids. I usually go more in depth with the eyelids, but um, I'm not doing a full drawing today. Um, on top of the cheekbones, because that's where the light would hit. In this little upper lip area, under the cheekbones, some on the forehead, and some on the neck. And then we blend it out. Uh, wait, let me show my blending thing. So that's how, this is what my um, watercolor tool is adjusted to. Okay. Let me continue blending this and I'll be back. I also add a little bit around the nose if I'm feeling a little silly. Okay. Back to being sped up. Okay, now that we're done with the lighting for the face, I'm just gonna take this and put a shine layer effect on it. I like shine the best because it really gives it that, you know, shiny effect. And this filter is really, really strong. So I lower the opacity a lot. There we go. And then usually I do another shine layer on top of it. And this really, really helps give it that shiny effect, in my opinion. Let me show you, this is gonna be really good, but this is where I typically put my bits of shine, just on like the uppermost thing where you think the light would hit the best. So in these little spots. Okay, now that I'm done with that, we're just gonna make this a shine layer. And low the opacity. So that's it without it. That's it with it. I like to make my um, highlighting and contouring very um, strong. <laughs> really contrasted. I just think that looks really good. Okay, so after I'm done with all the coloring in the face, what I like to do is take a nice orange color and then, like how we're doing with the original colors, I'm gonna add, with the clipping group, an orange, just color it completely orange. And then I put a linear burn filter on top of it, and I lower the opacity, it's just like, you know, like 5% or 8, whatever. So it makes everything warm and like the same color and tone and it just makes it look just so much better. And then I go into filters and I like 
I up the saturation, lower the luminance, and adjust the hue to how I want it. I o always do the hue and saturation first and then the brightness and contour. I lower the brightness, up the contrast, up the depth. So it makes everything look really warm and strong and contrasted and I just think it looks awesome. What I would do after this is actually go in and, you know, combine like the liner layer and the color layer to make it and then like do all my painting stuff. But this is what I do as like a base just so I know what I'm doing. But once I would do that, I usually take, you know, like a white color and then I outline what I think needs to be outlined. So if something is like a similar color, I would outline the, sp the space between them. So uh, usually under here would be darker, but I, I didn't do that. But I would usually put a white line between the chin and the other side of the neck. And then I would probably do the other sides of the hair. You know, this is really messy because it's not an actual drawing I'm trying to do, but yeah, that's what I would do for white highlights. That is really strong. Okay, whatever. I'm going to combine these layers just so I can do my next thing. Um, what I would do after is I go to this outline. Thing under layer and this will create a white oh hold on let me let me put a nice color under this usually I start out with a pink background because it helps um, with the warmth of the colors that's just what I do you want to do that before you color I just completely forgot to do it because it wasn't that important okay make your color white or whatever you want and then go to outline and then you can create a white outline on the outside of your drawing look at that and it outlined the oh my god it outlined <laughs> the blue color palette too um and because we um made everything much darker i will sometimes go in and put um, the highlights back in properly because they got like destroyed by the darkness uh, filter so yeah that's what I do when I color hopefully this was pretty helpful in some ways or another um, yeah hope, hope you gain something from this